Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to draw black and white mottled fur. This piece is part of a triple portrait that I've done as a part of a commission and the videos of the other two dogs are on the channel so make sure you check those out. Again, showing you some really simple techniques of how to um, lay lighter colours over the darker pastels. My name's Gemma and I'm the artist behind Portraits by Gemma. For more content just like this, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell button so you can be notified when new channels are released. So let's get going. sort of darker areas we've used the pan pastels in black that's all I've used that's the only colour I've used so as before kind of putting the darker uh, colours in and then blending it out with the tool in the lighter areas and not putting any more pigment on we're just trying to um, blend in the pastel into the tooth of the pastel mat but creating thin layers so we've got enough layers to build upon what we don't want to do is fill in the tooth too early and then we won't be able to get any more colours on. So as you can see the reference photo is a little blurry um, but there are quite a lot of blue colours through the ears and a little bit at the top of the head. So I'm going to go put in some blue um, and we will see what that looks like and then we will start putting in the eyes I think after that. So I'm going to start kind of in this area here there's not a great deal of blue, but I just think the blue does kind of bring out the highlights of the white when you actually put the white in as well. It is bad practice to blow the pastel. I keep doing that, so don't copy me on that. Um, so again just really really gently apply the blue this is the um, Payne's grey I say it's blue it is actually the grey it's the Payne's grey 840.3 pan pastel So I've kind of got in the underpainting on the main area of the dog. Um, I'm now going to work on the eyes. Obviously I've zoomed in quite a bit here so the tooth still looks quite grainy. Because I've not obviously added in all the layers yet. Um, so you can kind of still see the tooth quite well here. But this will all soften once we get more layers in. But I kind of want to get the eyes in just because I like to do that so I can get a bit more of the detail in. So we're going to start with the black pit pastel and we are going to plot in the shape of the eye first so we get that right. 
so we're going to just basically do the outline just going to grab bear with me just going to grab a piece of this because I feel like I'm going to smudge everywhere It's quite dark at the top of the eye, but we're just going to literally draw around the outer edge. I'm cross checking the reference all the time just to make sure it's the right shape. Now we know that fur's really dark here, so we can go in and darken that up as well. And it starts to get lighter above there. This part of the eye here is pretty much dark all the way down to here, so I'm going to be brave and block in all of that dark part there. And then here is where pupil kind of kind of meets down there. And it's dark kind of all around this edge, so I'm going to put that in. Um, and then next off, I'm going to put in the highlight so I make sure that I don't miss that. So there's a highlight at the top here, and then there's one a bit more in the centre. So there's kind of a little line here, and then one underneath. I'm going to go back in with the black now, I've put those in because we know that it's quite dark this side and into the corner of the eye, and there's a dark kind of spot this side as well. I think when it's a small scale like this, they are particularly tricky to do with pastel. Um, so this edge here is really thin, but then at the bottom here it kind of thickens up a little bit. So I'm just going to go and thicken that edge up along here. And then it joins with that. And this bit's kind of dark around here. I'm now going to put in a light grey and it's slightly darker here where it meets the black so we're going to use a slightly darker grey there and it's slightly brighter at the bottom where it comes here so we're going to put in a bit of white here. Now the colour I can mainly see in the sort of centre is this sort of brown so I think I'm going to use the 11177 put this all through here and then we'll give it a blend to soften it all Oops. and I'm going to use the blending stumps to sort of give it a bit of a blend with eyes I tend to use kind of small circular movements to do this this allows it to kind of get into the tooth of the paper and then you can see what other layers you need to put down. Just be careful not to drag any of the dark colour into the white areas. And we'll just drag the black out a little bit here because it kind of meets the edge there, which might look quite nice to do it that way. Again, there's kind of a dark patch up here, which I can probably drag out as well. I'm going to make sure I've got a clean end of the stump, and I'm just going to soften this highlight a little bit here. These really help to fill in the grain, and you lose that toothiness then. It makes things look smoother. Um, I'm now going to go in with the sort of charcoal grey, and just add a bit more of that to this area here. 
and also in the eye itself I've noticed it's got a little bit of that in here and it's also got a bit down here that I'm just gonna fill in And then to define the edge of the eye here, it's a bit lighter, so I'm just going to put that in. And bring that colour down into here. looking pretty good I'm just going to bring this colour out to soften the edge between the black and the grey here again always in the direction of the fur and when you're doing these fine hairs so you sort of top layers you really want to be holding the pencil at the bottom and using a really light pressure to go in the direction of the fur and then you get these beautiful soft hair lines that you can then keep building up you can then start to add more pressure as this builds up to create the highlights within that so I think this eye area is near enough there so what I'll do is I will do the other eye and then I'll meet you back and we can start doing the top of the hair. So we've got both the eyes in now. Um, and then we're going to kind of work onto the top of the head. So as always, the process that I use, the technique I do, is always putting in the darks first. Um, you'll probably get sick of me saying that. But this is how I work. So I'm going to flick this dark area that I've already put in with the pan pastel. And I'm just going to take it up and soften the edging here. Again, it's kind of longer strokes because it's quite long fur here. So although um, it's direction of fur, it's also length of fur if you can. So you can try and get the strokes um, right for the length of fur because that will make a difference as well. This is kind of the meat in the white bit here. And we've got that part on the top. Slightly whiter highlight here. And that's kind of blending out from the root there. So I think it really does help when you initially get your reference photo to really kind of study it for a little bit before you go into anything and just focus on you know length of hair, the type of fur that it is, maybe think about how you would create that technique, even maybe do it on a scrap piece of paper just to see if you can get the technique right. So I'm now going to get the kind of charcoal -y Payne's grey and just put that through here where there's this sort of highlight on the top of the head. It's a bit of a sort of V-shape, isn't it? And then that lightness carries down a little bit into here and the top of that curl there. Again, you'll see how lightly I'm pushing on the paper but it still makes a difference to the shadowing and it kind of is to in and fro in at this point between the, the colours and getting the hair or the little hairs in you'll see I've not got my pencils really sharp but I keep turning them because the pastel mat's so coarse it kind of sharpens them for you a lot of the time. 
saves you wasting it. Um, so that's that bit. This kind of comes out a little bit here, doesn't it? And down into there. And there's actually a sort of lighter area here. So I'm going to continue working across the top of the head um, and then we can go through the muzzle area together. Okay, so we've done the eyes, the top of the head, and they're going to work, um, I think I'll leave the ears till last, so I'm going to work down into the muzzle area. There's only a very fine layer of pastel on here, so I think I'm just going to go and put a bit more down. A bit. I think what I'll do is I'll speed this up for you, and then I'll meet you back when I've put in all these hairs, so I'll be using this colour, then after this colour I will go in with the white, and then I will go back in with the black into the spotted areas just to make them stand out a bit more. So I'll see you in a minute when I've done that. detailing on the nose um, so I think what I'm going to do now is where there's kind of white areas I'm just going to put in a tiny tiny bit of this blue which is the 140 it's what I like to do when I've got white fur I think it makes it stand out but also within this dog there is quite a bit of blue which we initially laid down in the sort of Payne's grey in the ears so I kind of want to introduce that into this middle section here because there are little areas I can see that I think might benefit from having that colour in so I'm just going to kind of do that and then we'll work on the nose so I'll start at the top actually um, it, it's hardly going to be noticeable um, but it just helps to make the white stand out a little bit more and now I've kind of seen that colour in there I, I can see more and more of it that makes sense so just I think as well it will help to tie in with the other dogs because they've got this nice blue in there as well so I'm really really gently pushing because obviously I don't want it to like show the tooth of the paper up I want it to have that smooth look especially on these dogs because they have that really shiny coat that um, we want to make sure we've kind of captured. So there's a little bit of blue here. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but it, it's very subtle. not really any in that area because that's more of the browns but then it comes kind of down into this nose point here so I think that's probably enough we don't want it too much so I think I want to kind of get the nose in now so the nose starts around this point here doesn't it so I could probably put this down a little bit further Sorry, I'm knocking the camera. So for the nose, I'm going to add in this dark black area here that I can see. And then it's a little bit kind of mottled around here. Similar technique to the rest of the picture where I'm putting in the darks first. I've just I've lost the original kind of outline of it, so I'm just trying to 
get the shape right before I make too many markings. kind of shape there I'm just gonna I've gone a bit wide with the black here so I'm just gonna bring that in a bit see the original line now so that's kind of more grey here it's actually quite straight on these lines here so I just wanted to make sure that's right that looks about right now I think and then the nostril areas And it's easier to sort of work on both sides of the nose so you get it symmetrical. So there's quite a dark colour here coming down and around down into this point here and then again down here. That's pretty much black in there. There's a tiny highlight in the, in the nostril itself. Sorry about that noise in the background, it's um, a car outside. So, this nostril looks a little bit strange, but maybe when I've blended it out, it'll look better. It's like rubbing his car or something. I'm not sure what he's doing. Right, so that's there, and then we'll just circular motion and kind of blend all these dark areas in
kind of blend it out this side a bit. If you are following along with this, please send me your pictures because I'd love to um, see them and see your work. I'm just kind of blending the edge out because what we'll do is we'll go in with the pastel again right at the end and sort of feather those um, hairs out, the really fine hairs, but this helps to just soften the edge of the nose as well and make it look like it's not just plonked on the face. So I'm going to go back in now with the black. I'm hoping my new black arrives soon because this is the only one I have left. It's kind of a mottled effect here. A wide nostril this side, which is confusing me because it looks different to the other side. That car is really annoying me. I think I need to invest in a better um, microphone. If anyone knows of any good microphones that I'm not very savvy with all the tech stuff. If anyone knows of any good ones, they can recommend that blocks out kind of background as well. into there. There is actually quite a lot of sort of violety greys in here as well. So we'll try and get some of that in, especially the Payne's grey. So again, gone in with a bit more dark. I'm going to just blend that out again. it's looking all right on the camera um so now we're going to add in yeah this Payne's gray sort of color again little tiny like i'll show you on my hand i'm literally going like circular little motions and build the highlights up because it's quite subtle the highlights on this nose it's not as wet as the other dog's noses that I've drew, drawn, drawn on here and then it's kind of coming down into this bit here which then allows you to sort of see the nostril a bit more it's not going all the way around it kind of stops here and then it goes down this sort of center line here which I'm just gonna darken a bit no. and then it kind of goes around here and then around this point here it's lighter as well coming down into a point 
like that and that's actually a bit more lighter so I'm just going to put in more of this colour on there. What's always good to do is these dots but then just dab it and it just takes it back a bit. And there's a little bit more sheen on this side here. Again I'm also going to add a tiny bit of that blue as well onto the nose. And then this sort of side, it's little tiny lines around the edge of the nostril, coming down into here. I think with noses, it's so important to draw what you're looking at and not what you think you're looking at. When I first started drawing, actually I'll see if I can I'll see if I can add a photo at this point. Um but you'll see it's kind of on this photo here that it's I've drew the nostril out basically and it's just too harsh the line. Um so if you can just kind of blend it really subtly and gradually build up the highlights as opposed to drawing every little detail in straight away. Right, I'm just going to now work on the edging. So we've got lots of little kind of black hairs feathering out on here. But before I do that, actually, I'm just going to lighten up the edge around here. lighten that up and then go in with the um, dark pencil Just work your way around. Again, hold at the sort of base of the pencil, really light pressure, and just flick the lines out. So much softer. And 
I'm just going to drag that up into there a little bit more so it's a bit darker. Looking alright. And then sort of around this side here it is a little bit darker so we're just going to work into that a bit more. We see all the whiskers but like I said I'll, I'll, I'll do those right at the end once I've got all this in because if they're going to go over here then we're going to just end up smudging them when we do the, the ears. I'd rather just leave those till the end. It's kind of a darker patch there, so I'll pl put that in. Put a bit dark here. And up here. There's a lot of this raw umber colour around this area here. And then just give that a blend out. It's predominantly kind of white hairs around here, but I'm just going to get in all the darker areas first. The kind of lip um, that we can see under here. I'm not quite sure. There's a dark line up here as well, which I'm not too sure and that looks a little bit strange, but I think it's just the markings from under the nose. This again is quite dark around here, but rather than the other side where it's umber, this is a little bit more grey in tone, this side. So, just going to make a little bit more grey. And then add the... Just going to thin this cheek out a bit because it's not quite that wide. It's a good blend out here. So now we are going to go back in with the black, um, make this a little bit darker. Trickle this fur detail down into the jowls here. And then from the mouth as well, there's kind of little lines coming down.
and obviously this looks quite harsh now this line so we're just going to kind of soften that up with really fine lines in the 230 which is kind of like a warm grey I'd say and drag it into this dark area just so it blends this section in okay so we've got the most of the face kind of in now um, I'm now going to go and work on the ear so I'll initially show you how to do it and then I'll speed things up um, just to quickly show you the technique I've added some of the whiskers in here but again there's some that I need to add in kind of later when I've finished so we'll take the black and we'll go and start with this point here and we're just gonna basically kind of go over where we've used the pan pastels in the black and just soften it up a little bit kind of dragging it over the, the lighter fur Again, it's just looking at shapes, seeing what shapes you can kind of see. And then within those shapes, where the dark areas are. So I'll just do this little section so you can see what I mean. So obviously we've got a kind of piece of hair coming down here, which we know the base is pretty dark. This bit's pretty dark. And then it comes down into this dark centre bit. There's a highlight coming through here so we're going to kind of leave that and then there's a curl that's kind of coming all the way down here. So we'll just drag the black into that. It's kind of a bit of a line there. Again, it's getting to the point where I can't add too much more pastel because it's kind of filling up the tooth now. Which is good, that's where we want to be because we're only putting the final layers on now. So um, I'm now going to go in with the blue and kind of work into these highlights with that. really gentle building up you can notice that and then through here I'm just going to zoom in a bit because it's hard for you to see the tooth of the paper where I'm trying to fill it up so you'll see here you can still see the graininess. So if we go over that with a mid-tone in a gentle pressure in the direction of the fur, the graininess will start to disappear and then you'll be left with a nice smooth, fluffy looking kind of fur. that. So we just keep going over it. And then we'll go back in with the black. Just pull this in a little bit. Again, don't kind of concentrate on what it actually is that you're drawing, just literally almost look at each little section as its own picture. So this part is its own thing. And then once you step back from it, once you've done it, you'll see it all come together. So that's kind of the... through 
over where we've put the blue so you can kind of see the hair detail and then I'm going to go back in with the blue again Just soften this out a little bit. It's kind of a little bit of hair here. The reference photo isn't very um, detailed on the ears on this one, so it's got its main focus on the uh, nose and eyes. So. Having to improvise a little bit in certain areas because otherwise it will just be all black. So I'll just zoom it out so you can kind of see it coming together a bit more. Um, I'm now going to use the white just on tiny, tiny areas on here. So a little bit on here. kind of a sheen on here so I'm just softening that in with my finger a little bit and then the sheen is down here as well and a little bit here So it's a case of basically using these colours to create highlights within the fur and going backwards and forwards until you've filled in the tooth and you're happy that it looks smooth and you've got fur detail in there and then you can always go back into areas like this and really darken it up a bit. So I'm going to finish the rest of the ears and I will see you in a minute. So here are the finished portraits. I've really enjoyed this triple portrait. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching the videos. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell button so you can be the first to be notified of new videos. Um, all the materials I've used are listed in the description box below along with links of where you can also purchase these. Thank you so much for watching and please remember to try out some of the techniques I've showed you and enjoy creating some fab pastel work. See you in the next video.